Hello, this is Cabo. In this video I'm going to be talking about mushrooms. I want to talk a little about mushrooms because when I was trying to build mushroom farms in a game, I found that what I was observing from the mushrooms didn't really match up with what was in the wiki. So I ended up going to the game code. The, this video is going to talk a little bit about what I found in the game code about how mushrooms grow, a little bit about how fast mushrooms grow based on some experience, experiments I did, and a few techniques for farming mushrooms. So to begin, in case you don't already know, for each tick in Minecraft, blocks around the player are randomly selected for updates. If a mushroom happens to be selected for one of these updates, the first thing it will do is a 1 out of 25 random check. So it's just a random number, 0 through 24. If it happens to be 0, it passes. If it's anything else, it fails. If it fails the check, it doesn't um, continue the update, and the mushroom doesn't get a chance to spread. This is actually the probably the biggest limiting factor in mushroom growth gen in general. That's because that 1 in 25 chance on top of the random selection ends up actually being pretty slow. Anyway, say it passes this check, the next thing it will do is check a box that's 9 by 9 by 3 centered on the mushroom. What it's looking for in this box is mushrooms of the same color. So red mushrooms will look for red mushrooms and brown mushrooms will look for brown mushrooms. And within this box, if there are five mushrooms that includes the center mushroom, then it will stop the update. So Basically, it says if there are five or more mushrooms here, that's the limit. You can't grow anymore. But if there are fewer than five, it will go into the next step, which is to select a random block from a 3x3x3 three by three by three cube. And if we visualize it here with the red wool as a mushroom, it's all of these blocks, including the mushroom there. But the chance to select these blocks isn't, isn't equal. In fact, the row that the mushroom's on has a higher chance than the row above or below the mushroom. And that's because the Y selection is done by choosing a random number 0 through 1 and then subtracting a random number 0 through 1. This results in two chances out of four for the, the choice to be 0, which is the same level as the mushroom. So basically, two out of four times it will be here, one out of four it will be above, one out of four it will be below. The X and Z directions, which are the horizontal directions, do have a, uh, an equal probability. It's cho chosen by selecting a random number 0 through 2 and then subtracting 1. So going left, right, forward, back, or staying where you are all have have the same chance. Anyway, it doesn't just do one selection. It actually does a total of five selections and it's part of a loop. This loop does a check and selection that happens four times. So if we imagine this red block as a mushroom, and let's say that this green block is selected, the first thing that it's going to do is a check. And there are two parts to this check. First is to see what the light level is in this block, or if the block underneath is mycelium. So if it's below light level 13, so if it's 12 or lower, or if the, the block is mycelium, it's OK. And then the next part of the check is to see if the block below is solid and opaque, and if it is, it's OK. Basically what it's doing is saying, can the mushroom stay in this block? And if it is, it doesn't place the mushroom yet. What it will do is it will change the location for the, cent the, the center of the, the block selection cube to this block, and it will do this four times. So from this, we can actually deduce it's possible for mushrooms to sp uh, spread up to five blocks away. The way it would work is we'd have the loop occur four times, and then we'd have a final block selection that's five blocks away. This is interesting because it's actually possible for mushrooms to spread all the way up here, given the right circumstances and given the, a lot of luck. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's all there is to how mushrooms grow. Uh, that final block selection is where the mushroom would be placed, assuming that it can stay in that block. So let's talk a little bit about how fast mushrooms grow. So I've set up a room here, which is just a large room with blue wool spaced four, four blocks apart. And on top of each blue wool, I put a mushroom. There are 50 mushrooms in total, or 50 seed mushrooms in total. The roof of this, this room is glowstone because light level doesn't actually affect mushroom growth. Uh, at the end, I can actually demonstrate this to you, and it's a pretty simple process. But anyway, 
In this stream I did a series of tests, the first of which was sort of like a control. I let the mushrooms grow, and as they grew, I went ahead and harvested them as soon as they popped up. This is basically so that I could see how fast they grow without the, mu the grown mushrooms having a chance to spread more. So the results are roughly 0.8 mushrooms per hour per mushroom for 50 mushrooms. I did this over a 30 minute duration. The next test I did was to just let the mushrooms grow for 30 minutes and then after each 30 minute period I'd go and harvest them all. I did this seven times. This totaled to 172 mushrooms which averaged to 24.5 per half hour which works out to be 0.98 per hour per mushroom for 50 mushrooms. So roughly what this is saying that for each mushroom on a flat surface like this you've got one mushroom growth per hour. Of course this is completely random. You could put down a mushroom and the next second see a, a mushroom grow or you could put down a mushroom and not see a mushroom grow for two or three hours afterward. It's completely random. But it still gives you a good idea of how long it takes for one mushroom to grow. You should see growth after an hour. Um, I did one final test that's not really related to speed. I just wanted to see how many mushrooms would fill out this room. So I let it run overnight and it generated 104 mushrooms altogether. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we know how mushrooms grow and how fast they grow. Let's talk about farming them. We can just fill a room pretty simply uh, with mushrooms like that on a flat surface, but there's actually a more efficient way to do it if you don't really care about how fast the mushrooms grow. This method is slower because the mushrooms have to grow down, but if you put them on tiered, tiered platforms like this, you actually get a lot more mushrooms because if you have a mushroom up here and a mushroom up here, because they check that 9x9x3 nine by nine by box, they only check one above and one below, which means they're out of range of each other. So this mushroom won't see any mushrooms below these, this white wool, and this mushroom won't see any mushrooms ab above this green wool, which gives you a chance for mo more mushrooms to spread. And this is an example over here. You can see there are a lot of mushrooms surrounding these seed mushrooms on the top of these platforms. Uh, this is a 36 by 36 area and there are 16 mushrooms. They're alternating color and by comparison here's a 36 by 36 area with 16 seed mushrooms alternating in color and you can clearly see the large difference in numbers. That one hasn't spread any but still it's quite a few uh, fewer. I did let them run overnight and harvest them once and found 87 from this one, from that setup, and from this setup, 174. So it's clear if you want more mushrooms, you should stack them on tiers like this. In comparison, it's almost double, or more than double, the, the number. Wait and see. 87. Oh no. It's exactly double. Anyway, um, but if you don't want to harvest mushrooms manually, you can use water streams. Here's actually an example I used with this tier, tiered structure to harvest mushrooms. It doesn't quite work um, in this patch because if a water block drops straight down onto a mushroom, it will destroy it instead of uprooting it, but it will collect most of these. Um, Basically, the water just flows down these holes and around these corners all the way down to the bottom. The reason that I have signs here rather than blocks is because if a water stream drops and splits into two directions, it creates a, a patch of still water. And we don't want that because the mushrooms would just get stuck there. So instead I have them drop down to the bottom and fall into this collection canal where they all get funneled to a single point. Anyway, show you what it looks like. Water goes down pushes up the mushrooms, they fall down the hole, and as it goes through, the mushrooms start falling down, and they flow down, and slowly collect over here. Pretty simple, straightforward design. Um, you could probably apply this to this entire area, and get them to collect underneath, and then funnel to a single point. It's not very hard to do, but if you don't want to have a big space like this and would rather build a t vertical tower. This is my preferred design. It's also very simple. 
the mushroom is in the block underneath this glass. Normally this would be a opaque block and not glass, but you can use whatever you are. Well, you'd have to use an opaque block because you want to put another mushroom on top if you're in a stack. Uh, basically the stacks would look like this. You have a, a mushroom, a block on top, a mushroom, a block on top, and it just repeats as far as you need to go. Um, I prefer this version where you have the mushrooms on top because if you have mushrooms in the middle, even though they have two out of four chances to spread to this row, it's easy easier to harvest with water streams if you have a, a solid block here. Also, because there's a mushroom above and a mushroom below, it's one-fourth chance from this mushroom and one-fourth chance from that one, so it works out to be two-fourths anyway. Uh, these designs are actually the same concept, same principle, but this one has a 4x4 four four minus 2 space for the mushroom to spread, whereas this is just 3x3 three three minus 1. So, same idea. Water comes out, flushes all the mushrooms down. The tower over here is 24 blocks, or 24 mushrooms, which is 24 levels. And um, it's using the 3x3 the three three design. I haven't harvested it for a while, but when I was harvesting it in 30 minute intervals, these are, these are the results I got. Uh, it averaged to about 13 mushrooms every half hour, which is pretty good, since you don't really need many mushrooms for soup, and each brown mushroom can be turned into three potions. Um, I let this run for maybe about two hours, I think, so let's go ahead and flush it and see what we get. And you can see the mushrooms start coming down. Alright, that sounds like all of them. Go ahead and turn it off. And let's uh, get rid of this. Pick them up. We got about 50 of each, which is pretty good. Um, I think it was about 2 hours. I'm not sure how long it, it was. But 100 mushrooms over 2 hours is not bad. Anyway, so we've got mushrooms in these towers. And the sides are just controlled by these vertical redstone um, torches, and I just pulled out every other line and split it into two. The reason I did that is because the pistons are every other level, so we've got a piston here and a piston here and a piston here, and if we just took the, the power from the torch it would uh, be on off, on off, on off. So we just take it from every other row instead. It's a pretty easy set setup. I'll just show you how it's done right now. So let's say we want it from these two, then we'd have a line here, our pistons would go on the ends of these, we'd put a torch here, and some redstone dust to connect this torch to that block. Now you can see they're all extended, if I flip the lever down here, they all retract, flip it again, they all extend. Very simple. And I just have that wired up to a lever down here. So uh, that's all I have to say about farming. I don't really have any other ideas I want to share to, as far as farming goes, but I want to talk about mushrooms growing in the dark, so I'm going to switch to another map and show you how that's done. And we're back. So I'm going to apologize in advance for the windowed mode. It's because of the recorder that I'm using doesn't support full screen 64-bit Minecraft. Um, I'm switched to 64-bit because 32-bit Minecraft can't allocate enough RAM to handle this gigantic contraption, which is just a huge bud switch harvester array. The way it works is we have a mushroom here, and when it spreads to either of these blocks, it triggers an update from this bud, which self-resets and drops the mush pulls this block out and drops the mushroom down. It's very simple, pretty easy to bi build. The uh, block just extends and 
resets the butt up here and sends a pulse to turn off this which retracts the piston. And all these timings are set up to allow the maximum amount of time for the block to retract so that I can make sure the mushroom falls down. This uh, array was just created with MC Edit. I just took that and basically copied it hundreds of times. The result is something like 1,048 mushrooms of each type in this array, which is quite a bit. It generates a lot of mushrooms. Uh, this is the one that's for light level 12. It's the maximum light level that mushrooms are allowed to grow. I have glowstone on both sides, and as you can see, the light level in this block is 14, so this is 13, and this is 12. You can see a mushroom can be placed. And also the seed mushrooms, there's glass here, so the light will pass through. It's 13 and 12 on the seed mushrooms. So the maximum amount of light on both the seed mushrooms and this, the destination block. And then if we go over here, I have the same array except that it's in the dark. And it, when I did the tests, it was completely dark, but now that I've reloaded the map, it seems like there's some light glitching through. I'm not sure where it's coming from, but if I go under here, you can see just how dark it actually is. Um, so right here, we're at light level 2. The light's actually coming from a redstone torch behind this piston, so it's light level 3 on the destination blocks. But behind here, we have the the mushrooms which are in light level 0. So light level 3 here and light level 0 on the the source mushrooms. So as dark as I could get it, I mean the destination block could be 0 but well I tried my best. Anyway here are the results for completely dark. After three hours of just sitting there collected a total of 830 mushrooms. And then if we go over here, the same amount of time in the light, which is light level 12, we collected 826 mushrooms. So that's only four mushrooms. The same amount of time, just set a timer, came back after three hours, and only four mushrooms difference out of nearly 830. That's less than 1%. That's like 0.5%, which is not significant at all. Uh, so I think this pretty clearly demonstrates that light level doesn't really affect mushroom growth. And I'm going to go ahead and uplo upload this map as well, so you can feel free to test it out and see for yourself. But I'm satisfied with this result. Anyway, thank you for watching my video. I hope you liked it. Uh, please let me know what you thought, and if you think you would like to see more videos like this, please feel free to leave any suggestions and let me know if you'd like me to try anything like this in the future. Thanks again, and bye!